welcome everyone, one and all, to my reaction to episode 8 of Fellow Travelers, the finale, Make It Easy. So, oh, last time, we had the last meeting between Tim and Hawk before the future scenes where we originally saw them re-meeting, you know, and it was a tough one. Tim walked out on Hawk because he saw that Hawk was not putting in the effort needed to get better. He wasn't even trying, and that was very hurtful for Tim. It was hard for him to see, so he left but obviously we know that that was then the catalyst that allowed hawk to get better so it's good to know that at that point hawk got, got his act together and actually was there for his family and everything but it just fucking sucks this entire show just watching these two people who are so in love with each other so obviously in love with each other going through these different stages of their lives hearing about their life story what they got up to and then just to get to this point where it's like Tim's gonna die? Like, what do you mean? It's like, it's a beautiful story, but equally it's a horrible story because it's not a story, it's true. Like this story specifically may not be true, but there were so many people that were wiped out in those years who had their lives ahead of them, who had their futures ahead of them, who had their own loves and it was taken from them. And it's just fucking horrible to think about. So I'm not ready for this episode. I'm not ready to see the final moments of Tim because I think it's very, it's very clear to say that he's not getting better it, we know what's coming this episode and i'm not ready to see it but equally i know that they are going to do a fantastic job with it i know that it is going to be uh, an amazing piece of storytelling you know i'm just i know it's gonna hurt <laughs> and that's why i'm hesitant to press play but with that said i'm very excited to get into it and just see how everything plays out even though i know it's going to be painful so with that said for the last time let's jump back in to fellow travelers yeah. It's me. Oh, Lucia. shit. I thought it was the hospital. It's been a rough 48 hours. Yeah. I'm here. Where? Oh. San Francisco. Oh, I thought she meant like, I'm here for you. Okay, interesting. Oh, fine. Not fine. receiving word from your husband would be really weird. <laughs> for that long, you know, what about with everything house? happening. The movers. All that's on hold. We need to talk. Oh. When she says we need to talk, what is she referencing? Does she mean, like, uh, talk about our relationship? Like, because there's a few routes I'm going down in my head. She's either worried that he's going to go down the route of, like, drugs and alcohol again because this is going to be a big loss in his life, and that's, like, a valid concern that she's having, which, obviously, completely understand. Another route I'm going down is maybe with all of this, and we've obviously seen that they're not in, like, the happiest relationship, and it's never been a very good relationship because they were kind of pushed to be together because of society you know so could this be a talk about like i finally had enough we should end things that would surprise me only because of like why go this long knowing everything and then now decide to end it but i'm also of the firm opinion that any like no matter the place that you're in your life the matter if you've got kids you're married i don't care if a relationship isn't working and you are not happy i've always been of the firm, firm opinion that you should end it like just end it take take what you can from that relationship try and still be friends and all of that like don't, don't end things on a bad note and everything but if it isn't working for you you deserve to have your happiness we all only get one fucking chance on this planet i would hate to be stuck with someone because i feel like i can't get out of that relationship because i don't know we've got kids together and everything like i, I would hate for that to be the reason for my unhappiness because if i have kids why on earth would i want to be unhappy and around my children do you know what I mean? That's why I've never understood this concept of like staying together for your kids. Like my parents got divorced and I was like always understanding of it because I would not like the knowledge that my mum or dad could have been like in a horrible situation where they're not in love anymore. They don't even want to be together anymore, but they're having to stay together to keep up this sense of family. Like th what? It's never made sense to me ever. Like I want to, my parent to be happy. I want them to have a good life just as I want myself to have a good life, you know? So I would never want my parents to stay together for this sense of keeping a family because a family can be whatever the fuck you want it to be it doesn't have to be mum dad and kids you know so even though i do think that they've been going on for a very long time with the same issues that it'll be weird to end it now i'd understand why obviously all the stuff with tim could be a catalyst that makes her think you know what i'm done you know he says quote there is too little evidence Turn it off. that these groups face discrimination wow too little evidence that they face discrimination. Go fuck yourself. Seeing my friend this afternoon. 
the fundraiser who knows the governor's chief of staff. I woke up last night and I didn't know where I was. I knew I was in a hospital, but I couldn't remember. I didn't know who I was. Oh, Tim. It's not true what they say about Proctor. I can smell it on you. Oh. Really, Hawk? Oh, shit. Ten in the morning. I'll let you know how it goes with my friend. Oof. You're welcome, by the way. Hawk, don't get like that. Do not resuscitate order. Oh, shit. There's a chance I could come out of the next seizure on life support. The social worker thinks I might want to consider. Wow. I'll be back. God, stuff well, like that is absolutely some three horrible. Throw it up. Popsicle. Sure. Lucy's in town. She asked if she could see you. Oh, she wants to see him. Okay. Could it be the vibe that, like, she's aware that, obviously, none of them have really got good in this situation? Like, none of them have had a good life out of it? Uh, it's hard to say that, obviously, Hawk and Lucy haven't had a good life. Because they have had a good life. Let's be fucking real. They've got money. They are in a good, like, they're in high society. They're obviously going to move abroad. Like, they've obviously had a fantastic life. But you know what I mean. When it comes to, like, their relationship, and obviously the relationship between Hawk and Tim, Tim, not a single one of those three have had it good in a relationship like none of them have been truly happy in that and so i do wonder whether she's going to see him as a kind of like neither of us got good in this situation and i'm sorry like you didn't deserve this i'm just i'm very curious to see her angle i think jerome has the virus Why? he hasn't told me but uh, he's been cold to me lately i see him whispering at frankie oh why won't he tell me oh no oh god well, they never want to talk about what's eating at them it's up to you to make the first move yeah. Before it's too late. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, you obviously know there's something wrong, so ask. And here I was, finally settled and faithful to Frankie. And you, your test. Negative. Still bulletproof. Damn. Oh, we are having a flashback. I thought we would be done with flashbacks. Okay. So is this when he, like, got his life together? Getting settled in your new study? Mm. Oh, she's pregnant. Okay. Your study. What's this? A telegram. It just came for you. Wait, was that a political thing? Yeah, okay, so he sent a letter asking Hawk to actually do something about um something going on at the time. So they did me up. Okay. Mr. Fuller. Corporal Laughlin, you broke your promise. Not to promise write. You won't write, you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Still fighting the anti communism cause. Yes. <laughs> I didn't expect a job offer. But you don't have the job yet. Okay, well, this is a piece of the story that we didn't have before. He tells me you used to work for Senator McCarthy. That's right, yeah. Those cowards who censured him in 54 were wrong. History will show. He's a great American. Don't know about that one, but... <laughs> None of them seem like good people. <laughs> That's McLeod's department. The M unit is going to be the ambassador to Ireland. Exposing perverts pays off. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's still in business, but they're running out of steam. Oh, they're still in business at this time. Jesus. I had to join the army to get away from you. Yeah. What's next? The foreign legion. <laughs> God, Tim well, really was know, trying his Osborne. hardest. Thanks. As I was going to say, Tim was really trying his hardest to move on, wasn't he? Never could get away from him, though. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. I just realized mm. that that's Jackson. Sure, it's a boy in there. I have a hunch. And every man want a boy. Oh, stop. Where would you like this? Right there. It's perfect. <sighs> we'll get the rest. Jesus Thank Christ, you. Hawk. <laughs> While you're standing with your pregnant wife feeling your baby kick. <laughs> she must be a hero of yours. She oh, is that Mary? And I intend to run for her seat someday. I am no longer on the federal government's payroll, so no risk of the FBI raiding my underwear drawer. Well, that's good. <laughs> Don't worry. He's changed. Do people change? I have. <laughs> Stopped worshipping false idols. McCarthy, Bishop Sheen, even you know who. Aren't you proud of me? Interesting that he's got to that stage when we know where he goes in the future, you know? Becoming quite, like, radicalized, you know? From Caroline. She's married, living in Ohio with her husband. That's her baby. Caroline, Caroline, Caroline. Was that the person that Mary was with? Let me check quick. It was. Okay, damn. Married him with a kid. Oof. Someone else had to conform then. I wonder sometimes when it all happened. If I had offered to leave DC with her, it could have been those two eccentric old ladies that all the busybodies in town whisper about. <laughs> if a kid wants to grab for the gold ring, you have to let him do it. If they fall, they fall. I don't know if Salinger would agree, but I think it's love. Yeah. If you fall, you fall. Fuck it. Go for it. It's like at the end of the day, you'll either find someone that you can love for the rest of your life or you won't. Like, 
that is a big that is something worth risking you know you gotta take that leap you gotta take that jump fucking go for it if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out but if it does work out holy shit would that be amazing i don't need to wear gloves do i no you're perfectly safe thank you it's like a part of you thinks uh but then obviously the social situation at the time i understand why she would be concerned how are you uh, my social worker suggested I sign a do not resuscitate order. How are you? Yeah, you don't really ask someone in that kind of situation how they are. <laughs> they could do more. But people like you would have to pay higher taxes. Wow. My father used to argue for a national health care system. He believed government should take care of its citizens. So do I. It's not always wise to judge someone on appearances. It's an interesting point because obviously Tim is at a very dark stage in his life now. He's at a very, like negative stage obviously he's fucking dying so he's not just going to be this happy person who's trying to like be kind to everyone you know like of course you understand when you're i feel like when you're in that kind of stage you just kind of want to fucking scream at the world like you're angry you're angry this is happening especially a situation when like this where the government isn't doing it enough like of course you'd be pissed so i understand why he would be um that way towards her but also it is hard to see someone like even her outfit and everything the way that she's walked in the room just seeing how privileged she is and then to just see her sitting there like that would annoy you even more that like how comes you got to have such a good life but i didn't like wh why is that fair in the world that some people can have this when others get what i've got but then everyone has their own struggles in life obviously we know that her life hasn't been a walk in the park with the loss of jackson and everything so people do have their own struggles and i definitely agree with you shouldn't judge someone just based on their look but i could understand why it would piss someone off i'm sorry mrs fuller but why are you here I don't know. Hmm. You mean something to my husband. I suppose I had to see you so I would know. What it was? How much you mean to him. Uh. Shouldn't you ask him? <laughs> right. <laughs> that wouldn't get you anywhere. <laughs> oh, I love that look that she gave him. The look of like, come on now. You know him. You had him most of his life. But you were always there. Oh. I could never get away from you. Like a ghost in the relationship. Then why didn't you leave him? Because we had a good life. And children. And then when Jackson... You don't want to hear this. Interesting. The only comfort I had was knowing that Hawk understood that suffering. Felt the same way. Okay. If I had had to bear that alone, I wouldn't have lived through it. I should be going. Mrs. Fuller, thank you for coming to see me. Bless. What? Oh, was that like a mini bed that he had made up next to him? Like to stay with him? Obviously, that was just her noticing little things like, okay, I can see that you obviously mean a lot to him. Because it is, it, it's, it's a hard thing for us to think about when it comes to these time jumps. Because... Like, we can so easily jump 10 years, but it's it, it's hard to think in your head what 10 years is. Like, the significant amount of time that that is. And so each of these time jumps that we've had, it's like we've seen them reconnecting. We've seen that that love is still there and everything. But then you, like, think to yourself, my God, the sheer amount of time that has passed between these, these meetings and the sheer amount of time that obviously Hawk has been with his wife... It's so strange to think about the fact that there is still love between him and Tim and he still cares about him so deeply when he's been with his wife this whole time, you know? Like, I don't know how I would feel in his wife's position. I don't know how I would be able to cope with that. I don't know how I'd be able to accept that and not feel like he doesn't love me. You know what I mean? Like, how do you still hold that much love for someone after that amount of time? It's, a, it's an interesting uh, human thing, isn't it? The idea of feeling loved and feeling wanted. Because someone could be with you for that amount of time, but then just these key moments that Hawk and Tim have been together, we've seen so much love there. And if there's so much love there, then is there really love in his relationship with his wife? Like, I, I, I would feel so confused if I was her. Like, the inability to understand. Because obviously, Hawk isn't someone who you can talk to either. He's not someone who you can actually get the truth out of. So she doesn't even have that outlook. But yeah, that was an interesting conversation. It was, as I expected, not one of, like, warmth and love for another person, you know. There was obviously some level of that there with her saying that the government should do more about this, that she believes in the national healthcare system. Like, there was an element of, like, warmth there, but obviously, 
as she said, it's always been a competition between the two of them. It's always been this fight for Hawk's love. So they're not exactly going to be ending this off as best of friends. So it, it went as I expected, but it was nice that she went to see him. It was, it was nice that they at least got to have that talk. How do you know this friend? He's actually uh, Lucy's friend. He wants to have a civil conversation about this disease. It's killing an awful lot of people. Yeah, but it's killing the wrong people or the right people, depending on how you look at it. Oh my God. Helping kids with cancer gets you votes and donations. Fags with AIDS. Who gives a shit? Jesus so Christ, you just, uh, you are a disgusting human being. <laughs> God knows you put your dick in plenty of holes back in the day. You taking this personally? Of course it's personal. What do you mean you take? You cannot talk about human lives. You cannot talk about a group of people dying, even if you are prejudiced towards them, even if you don't see them as the best people in the world. You cannot look at a group of humans dying and not take it personally. It should be personal. It should be personal to every fucking person on the planet. If you're going to sit there and talk about like, oh, but it's killing the right kind of people, go fuck yourself. My God, what a deplorable person. I'm trying to keep the peace at home. Happy wife, happy life. It's a big ask. Hawk. Nobody wants to talk about freaking AIDS. I know, and that's a fucking problem. Just a bill, baby. She's young. What can I say? I like it tight. Oh. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Did Linda ever find out about that? Hawk. Go the fuck off, mate. That's low, huh? Well, you're a low-life piece of shit, so good. I'll see what I can do to help Lucy's friend, but don't get your hopes up. <sighs> what a horrible man. To think that that's the kind of man that's in government as well. Like, Jesus Christ. Crazy. <laughs> Tomorrow, McCarthy's body will be moved to St. Matthew's Cathedral. Sorry, I missed what they were talking about about McCarthy. Oh, okay. Jesus. <laughs> I thought I recognized her face. Okay. <laughs> Does she recognize him? You're Mr. Fuller's friend. Oh, I just remember she's the, That's right. Do the I know bitch. Cocksucker. Yep. <laughs> I was about to say she was the homophobic one, and there we go. Jesus Christ. And aren't you be here? Come on. <laughs> also, I love how Gelly is crying at this man's funeral, calling Tim a cocksucker. Did you know who you're crying for? Jesus Christ. What do you do here exactly? Read. Listen to music. What a man does when he gets a chance to be alone. Alone. Yep. I'm the epitome of marital fidelity. Charles Mingus. Mingus? Ew. <laughs> Don't be rude, but what what awful name. <laughs> At the end, I saw McCarthy for what he was. A rabble-rouser. Demagogue. So why do I feel like I've lost someone? It was a big part of your life. Because you knew him. Yeah. And you're a decent person. The point of grief and loss is literally that you've lost something. You've lost someone. You've lost a person in this world and then like hawk was saying someone like tim who is such a nice person he's going to be empathetic for anyone and just being at a funeral and seeing people upset that someone's past that alone is going to upset you you know so even when someone could have been a negative influence on you even if you eventually see them as something negative when you didn't originally you can still feel that loss the epitome of marital fidelity yep <laughs> Shut up and drink your milk. <laughs> um. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my fucking god. That is crazy. <laughs> I want you to fuck me. Oh. Okay. Bit of a change up. Do I have to bribe you to come back? No. I knew this was going to happen the minute I opened your letter. Wow. I promise I won't be any trouble. I don't have any expectations. Oh. That's that's sad. You know, that Tim kind of just gave in. Because we know that the whole reason that Tim didn't want to do this to begin with was that he wanted more. He wanted a relationship. He wanted to actually be with this guy. And so the fact that he's kind of just given that up and is saying, I'll, I'll turn up whenever, like, I'm not expecting anything out of this. Like, that is sad. I wonder where this went. I wonder what ended this arrangement. Because we know that it doesn't continue. We didn't even know that this existed. So I wonder how long it went on for. Also, I just looked it up just to get an idea in my head of, like, the exact dates. So this, right after the funeral, is 1957. And in 1986 is where we're at with uh, Tim's health and everything. So 
29 years is fucking crazy. This is what I mean. It's so hard to visualize how long they had apart from each other. Like how long this story has gone. It's like, I can never get it into my head because we've just been flashing between them. I might have to give it a quick press. What? Does he have a hickey or something? I'm going to give it a quick press. Does he have a hickey or something? Oh no. Oh. Shit. Shit, 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 shit. How do you reconcile that? I mean, we know they stay together though. Okay. Back of course. I'm sorry that I've been away for so long. I shouldn't have left you hanging. I know that the move has been stressful. If we have to, we'll push things back a week or two. I'll let the office know. I'll make some excuse. I'm not moving to Italy. I was wondering if he was going down this route. I have to go to Italy. It's my job. I know. But she's I'm not. I'm not going with you. Wow. I can't. Then I, I won't go. You don't understand. I'll put in for retirement. No, she wants a divorce, I think. Tim means something to you. You deserve a chance to say goodbye. And I thought, God forgive me, when he dies, it will be over. I get it. I get it. Like, to be in her position, to have these 30 years of being together, knowing that your husband doesn't see you that way, knowing that you're always like the second person, there's always another person that there is love there, that he's never faithful to you, you know what I mean? Like that is a horrible position to be put in. And so I've never wanted to see her in a bad light. It's like she's as much of a, when I say victim here, I'm saying in reference to like their relationship being shit. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying like she's been, she's had such a bad life, but um, you know what I mean? It's like, she's a victim of this as well in that she wouldn't have wanted this relationship. She would have wanted a man who loved her, who was there for her, who wanted to be with her. She wouldn't have wanted whatever this came to be. So I've always felt bad for her as well. And so to hear her say that, it is a horrible notion. The idea of maybe once this person dies, it will be over. But I understand where she's coming from. Like, of course she'd be thinking that way. Of course that selfish thought would come into your mind. The idea of maybe this will finally be the time that he loves me. Maybe this will finally be the time where I'm the one that he drops everything for. Because that's what a husband should be. That's what a husband should do. And so I just, ugh. It's horrible. So I hope for her own sake, honestly, that she is talking about divorce here and that they might be um, leaving their relationship because even if they are older people, even if there is like not a huge chance that they will find someone else, I think it's so worth it to try. Stop. You have unfinished business here. You need to see it through. Come home when you're ready. But when you do, I don't think I'll be there. Lucy. I have lived my whole life not knowing what it's like to be desired. Do you have any idea how lonely that's been? Yeah. I'm sorry. Look, we're going to work this out. We always do. Hawk. Goodbye, Hawk. I feel bad for him because it's like she's been his constant. And so with Tim dying, it's like that would be gone as well. But she's not been happy. She's not desired. Like, imagine being in a relationship where you truly don't feel like your partner wants you. Horrible. What's going on with you? Tell me what's wrong. Nothing. You tell me what's wrong. Nothing. Cut the bullshit. I'm fucking positive. Okay. You happy now? No, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. It's not. It's not about. It me. is about me. It's about you. It's about me. Don't you understand that by now? I, I shouldn't have fucked around. I, I should have been more careful. <laughs> don't do that. You have the right to explore. Yeah, don't do that. You're innocent. You are innocent. Good job, Marcus. Say it. I'm innocent. You're innocent. It is not your fault. Don't you dare go down that line of thinking. You're exploring yourself and your sexuality, and it's this fucking government who has failed you. <laughs> that was a really sweet scene, not just from the perspective of, like, a father-son relationship, but also from a, like, black gay experience, you know? Like, saying to him that you may not even be accepted by your own community either way you know like the black community may not accept you because you're gay the gay community may not accept you because you're black it's like fucking hell the thing that i will never ever be able to understand in life especially when it comes to queer communities is the fact that there is still prejudice and judgment against other queer people against other people in general how the fuck can you go through your life being a minority being someone who has dealt with issues because of something that you can't change and then go and be racist I, it will never 
ever compute to my brain. What the fuck do you mean? Are you that, like, stupid? Do you have that, like, significant lack of intelligence that you can't connect the two there? It's always, oh my god, it's always hurt my brain to even think about people like that. But I love, a, a big thing that I've loved about fellow travelers as a whole, and I know I've talked about it a couple of times, so sorry to sound like a broken record, but I love that they have also explored the black gay experience because it's so easy to just explore Tim and Hawk's relationship and have that being the main focus and like not even touch on the race issues of the time as well. But the fact that they did, the fact that they've spent a significant time doing that as well, I've really appreciated that. It's been a beautiful experience and eye-opening, not in the sense that like I didn't know it was happening, but eye-opening in the sense that, you know, when you like don't see these stories, you don't have a visual media representation it can sometimes let you just uh, push it to the back of your mind and not think about it that much. Whereas, like, when you actually see it on TV, when, it's actually, when like, a story like this is actually represented and you actually have it faced before you, you see human beings going through it, it makes it feel so much more real. And it hits a lot deeper. It's the same with everything in this show, with the whole them being in government during the, um, oh, what was it called? The Lavender Scare, was it? The Lavender Scare? I can't remember the exact wording, but when we were seeing that, when we were seeing... Um, the AIDS crisis, like so many different points in history where you just hear about it and you know it was bad, you know it was atrocious, but to actually see people and assign their faces to it, it hurts a lot more. So scenes like that were really powerful where you see two people who obviously haven't had it good in their life, who have been thrown in the shit by society and he's like, no, don't let yourself go down that route of thinking that you're the problem, that you made a mistake. Absolutely fucking not. The only people who have made a mistake and are a problem are the government right now. I mean, we just saw that little fucker the hawk was talking to. Not a single ounce of humanity there. Not a single ounce of caring for a fellow human being. And those are the people in charge. Those are the people making decisions. It's fucking crazy. So what you're not going to do is go and blame yourself because I think we've got a very big list of people that we can blame before you blame you. How long have you two been together? 17 years. Wow. <laughs> we, were, we were babies when we met. We've been apart for more than a week. Aww. It hurts every time that I see them have these moments because they were so obviously in love. There was so much love there. Fucking sucks. When I get that job, we'll be colleagues. We'll see each other every day. Does this scare Hawk? You were making noises. I was worried. Are you okay? The do not resuscitate order. Did you sign it? I'm not going to sign it. If something happens to me, I want them to bring me back. I want to fight. Hell yeah. Here. Sorry. That's better. Oh. oh. <laughs> Fuck the universe. Fuck the times. This should never have happened. I feel like I'm fading away. No. <laughs> Disappearing a little every day. I've got you. No, that's not good enough. I promised him, Dave. I and I don't know how much time he's got left. It's the best I can do. You said Lucy was in town. Bring her. God. Well, that fucking sucks. I don't even know if Tim's got till Friday, honestly. I don't suppose you happen to own a tuxedo. Oh. Is he well enough? He's dead. Cohn died today in Bethesda, Maryland at the age of 59. The causes were a heart attack and complications from the HTLV-3 virus, which is thought to cause AIDS. God, what a little fucking... <laughs> it's people like him where it's like... He literally did nothing for his own people. He literally did nothing to help anyone. He did the exact opposite. He was constantly putting people down, constantly going against every single queer advancement. And it's just like... To then die of that and still have been, like, screaming from the rooftops that you didn't have it? Like, go fuck yourself. Guess that fucker was human after all. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Just about ten cents. I'll get this to you. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. It's always been you. You've always been the stronger one. Always. He told you. No. Oh. It's gonna be okay. Frankie is the definition of a strong person. Like, let's be fucking real. We won't. We're here. Do you think Hawkers any idea what he's getting into? Not a clue. <laughs> Are they all going? I just realized they were getting a suit ready. Oh, no. Is he getting a suit ready for Tim? Okay, makes sense. We tried you at the office, but you were out. Oh. Yesterday? Yesterday. And the day before. Oh, shit. Oof. 
It's a woman's job to worry about the baby. You have your work, I have mine. Go on, go back to the office, shoot. Oh my darling. God bless women of the past. <laughs> I'll see you at dinner then. It's so strange to look at this relationship because looking at it from a modern mindset, I, I, I cannot get past my own brain when I'm thinking things like, why don't you leave him? Why don't you see that obviously he isn't faithful and that's not a relationship you want? Like, it's hard to get myself into their minds because that's not how things were. It wasn't even socially acceptable to do that. Like, she would have been looked down upon so heavily if she tried to, like, end this relationship and split them apart and not be like this nuclear family looking after their children and everything like fucking hell the stress that she must have been under and like the pain that she must have been under to stay in this relationship and there were so many women in that same position this is the thing you always think about the gay people don't you it's like the women as well the women that the gay men married society really just did everyone fucking dirty apart from the straight men of course <laughs> society always does them well <laughs> Is that what ends this? Then he starts to feel bad. Don't tell me he leaves without saying anything to Tim. Before we continue this, I need to get the timeline up again, just so I have it in my mind of like where, when they met after this. So obviously we haven't actually visited um, this time before, but I need to know that gap that we had in between. So 1968 was where we saw him being a protester, Tim. So I assume that's, yeah, I think we left it off in the late 50s, wasn't it? No, so 57 is where we're at now. So it must have been early 50s that they said goodbye on that like tower thing. Then we had a jump forward all the way to 68. So we had like a 15 year gap or something. And then this obviously took place uh, like five years after where we left them off. So I assume we do go from this to then... That makes sense, actually, because we know that at this point with the conversation with Mary and everything, Tim had given up on his religion and everything. He'd given up on everything. And so then having this relationship with Hawk being brought up again, and then I'm assuming it doesn't end well, it would make sense that Tim would then go back down that route trying to find something to hold on to, something to latch on to, something to mean something in his life. But they, they're colleagues. He works at the government. I'm confused. Does Hawk ask to be moved or something? And then leave DC? No, but then they said in the future, Lucy said that her kids were in DC, so they obviously stayed in DC. Why is he in the M unit? It's about a fella who's getting close to a job in the Hungarian refugee relief program. No. He's got a few problems in the area you once questioned me about. I don't satisfy their security considerations. <laughs> you know what that means. Somebody's told them. Shh, shh, shh. Calm down. Wow. Oh my god, Hawk. I thought leaving him was bad enough. That is crazy. That, oh my god, that's so fucked up. That is so fucked up, mate. Oh, there's no excuse in that. There isn't a soul in Washington, who knows? No, obvious. there is. Yep. He came to see me last night. He wanted me to tell you that's why I invited you to lunch. He wanted him to know? Why? Why did he want him to know? Banned from working for the federal government for the rest of my life. Yeah. Jesus you Christ, how Hulk. Much I wanted that job. You become inconvenient. Yeah. He isn't like that. He is. He, you became inconvenient and you became complicated. And it was going to cause a problem because if you had been colleagues working in the same environment, it was going to cause you to see each other more often. And if you're going to be seeing each other more often, Hawk's going to run in trouble with his wife. It's going to cause things to be more complicated. And I think Hawk just wanted to be squeaky clean. He didn't want to risk himself again. He had had those years where you were in the army where he wasn't risking anything. And so the idea of actually having a relationship with expectations and all of that, he wasn't prepared for it. It makes sense for his character. He was scared. He was scared of being found out. He was scared of losing his life. And so he took the easy way out, which fucking sucks. And that now makes a lot of sense as to why there was a level of animosity there in the future god that's so all oh. and think about the fact that that then drives tim to then go into the religious route and becoming like a anti-war activist and everything and that he had he became like so shameful within himself during that time period that when he and hawk met up in the cabin and all of that he was like so ashamed of even just having a you know with hawk and not even doing anything together sexually the fact that this is what led him there wow 
that must have been weighing on hawk as well what an awful thing to do to someone though like i don't care the reasoning behind it or anything that is so fucked up hawk what it feels like we're on a date <laughs> oh, I, you. I may make a pass the girl can hope can't she <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's dave you ready i'm scared because we know how dave feels about gay people fuck lucy couldn't make it so i brought the friend i was telling you about oh. Dave Holm, Tim Loughlin. He's not going to shake his hand, is he? Nice to meet you. Wow. <laughs> Piece of shit. I don't want to interrupt him right now. Maybe later. He came all this way to meet us. Fine. Fine. We're not leaving. It's fine. But wait. I'm going to get some air. Must be horrible to be dying and have someone not, like, even refuse to shake your heart, hand. Like, no hard feelings. Hey, just to be clear. <laughs> Tim isn't Lucy's friend. Oh. He's my friend. He just got out of the hospital. I was there with him the whole time. <laughs> I climbed into his bed and held him. <laughs> Great party, Dave. Oh, go the fuck off, Hawk. Took a few decades, but go the fuck off. <laughs> Even being in your life hurt you oh. in some way. I spent most of my life waiting for God to love me. And then I realized the only thing that matters is I love God. It's the same with you. I have loved you my whole life. Oh, Tim. What a positive way to look at it. No regrets. Bless you, Tim. Wow, in public. Would you look at that? <laughs> in public. And the world didn't come to an end. <laughs> I'll take your badge. Marcus is going inside with me. He needs your badge to get in. I don't understand. I knew Lonigan refuse to see us and then i invited you to the gala i mean it was very convenient <laughs> <laughs> i think i've been used <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love that though <laughs> hey give us a minute that was so sweet though also i need to know does tim like not think that hawk loves him because it's so obvious to me that hawk loves him but i'd understand if tim doesn't think that the only reason i'm gonna do that line of thinking is him saying I spent so long waiting for God to love me, but then I realized the only thing that matters is I love God. And so you think to yourself, does he genuinely think that Hawk does not love him? Because I can tell you right now, Tim, there is so much love there. Oh my God, does Hawk love you? It's just that the way he was raised, the world that he lived in, his way of survival was to hide, was to conceal, was to keep things simple, not have any names given out, just get with random guys and just get through life. You know, he wasn't prepared for whatever you two were beginning and i think that he i think the main reason he reported tim honestly was not just because it was complicated and everything but he wanted to hurt tim so that tim would also move on i think he wanted things to be over to like the highest degree that like tim would go and find someone else he would find happiness he would find love like that's what i'm thinking in my head i don't it may not be right, but that's what I'm hoping. That there was that element of wanting what's best for Tim as well, and he knew that he wasn't what was best for Tim. Like, whatever you're up to, and I, I don't want to know the details. I'll wait for you. Is he going to, like, jump on stage and take the mic or something? I have to fight this fight. That means letting go of everything else. And if you're around, I will not be able to let go. But I want to show up for go you. Go home, Hawk. Please. Oh, Tim. If that's what he wants and it's going to make it easier for him, then I guess you kind of have to. Hey, Skippy. Promise you won't write. <laughs> I won't. Come with me. Interesting. Oh, they're like storming the building, kind of. Cool. Oh, are they protesting? Because he's got um a thingy. Does he see them and then leaves? Like, sees them holding the baby? Oh, let's Ready? fucking go, guys. Yes. Let's fucking go. We're dying from indifference. Yep. Our government is killing us. Yep. AIDS funding now. Our, Our government, government is, is killing us. us. AIDS funding now. Let's fucking go. AIDS funding now. Wow. Oh, I'm so proud of all of them. Is Lucy already gone? She's fully cleared out. Wow. Girl, he is gone. The fact that he saw Jackson as a baby, then older, and then with everything that happened, that's so... Oh. I'm 
I remember reading about these. Aww. So many people were lost. It's disgusting. I was gonna say, has has Tim passed? Oh, are we in like the future part now? Roy Cohn, Billy Coward victim. Wow. I suppose at the end of the day he was still a victim to it. Did that say Tim? Dad? Oh wow, Her da his daughter went with him. You found him? <laughs> it's beautiful. What you've told me, it really suits your friend. <laughs> Sweetheart, he wasn't my friend. She knows, I think. He was the man I loved. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. Fuck yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, give me, give me a couple of minutes to process that, and then I will be back and we can talk about the episode. <laughs> so yes, there we have the finale of Fellow Travelers, and my God, what a, what a fantastic show! What a beautiful show! It's so rare that I can watch a show and not have a single thing that I thought to myself, "Oh, I wish they had done that better." You know, like there are so many times where I think, oh, I wish they'd done this. Oh, I wish they changed this. Oh, I didn't like how they did that. No, I don't have a single thing. It felt like watching a documentary. It felt like we were watching real fucking people. And as soon as you do that, you know that you've done a fantastic job at telling your story. But yeah, the story as a whole, absolutely fantastic. I don't sound like a broken record, but I loved the sheer amount of stories that we explored. I love the sheer amount of different walks of life that we explored. The, yeah, uh, yeah, the one thing that I wish we'd had a little bit more of, I do have a tiny pointer, is just to see the prospect from a, like, to see the, um walk of life of a lesbian at this time because we did have mary but obviously mary wasn't utilized that much but i suppose the the story was tim and hawk with a few side characters and we saw their stories as well so i do understand why we didn't explore mary as much but that would have been my only pointer from it was to see that walk of life as well but we still had so many fantastic walks of life i mean to break down the main four we had frankie who is an out and proud gay person someone who wasn't going to fucking hide who was never going to hide who fought for himself and was the probably the strongest person on the show let's be fucking real like frankie is an icon but we equally then had marcus someone who was struggling with his identity as a black man and a gay man at the same time and would often hide the gay part to try and fit in with the black part better but then equally would still deal with the racism of the society it's just jesus fucking christ i could not imagine the turmoil that was going on in that man's brain throughout his life but then to move on from him we had hawk who was a war veteran someone who with his relationship with his father never had a good idea of love never had a good idea of being in a relationship with a man and actually being happy and then tim someone who wanted that who wanted more than anything to live a happy life but was equally held down by his religion and not main not really his religion but more so his perspe his perspective of his religion because we saw at the end where he had that realization of it it was just his love for god that mattered it didn't love it it, it didn't matter if god loved him which uh, to use your religion to try and make another person feel like they are committing a sin they are a bad person because of it like I will never be okay with that. I will never be okay with that line of thinking. But I'm glad to see that Tim in the end kind of let go of that notion of shame. Let go of that notion of putting himself down because of things that he had been told about his religion. The only thing that matters is that he loved God and he tried to do right by his God. So I love that we also got to explore that religion side of things as well. And it's a big struggle even in today's day and world for so many people where their religion is telling them it's wrong and that it's a sin and that like fight within yourself to realize what the fuck does that mean for you what life do you want you know so like i said really enjoyed the different lives of the different walks of life that we explored i think that each and every person had their own unique struggles and to see that represented was really nice but the main thing of the story was love love between two people who just could not have it who could not express it with each other who could not be open and proud and honest with each other and it is so sad it's like it's nice that they had that right at the end but it's also equally so fucking sad that it got to the end for them to actually have a kiss in public 
and for the hawk to actually say to his daughter that that was the man that he loved like ah uh, once again i don't want to i don't be a broken record but it just makes you so fucking proud to be living in this time and proud of those people that came before you and just have such fucking love and respect for them for everything that they went through and to feel so fucking privileged to live in today's day and age like i know we still have our struggles i know that there is still homophobia transphobia biphobia there's so many fucking things that are wrong with the world even fucking racism and the fact that all of that is still going on is shit and it's something that we are still gonna have to keep fighting for as time goes on but my god do i feel privileged to live in this world right now when i look back there and i see the struggle they went through the mentalities of people the disgusting attitudes of people oh my heart goes out to each and every fucking one of them but yeah the finale as a whole great episode fantastic representation of their love fantastic rep representation of their story i like that we did end it with lucy and hawk ending things because i also equally think that she has also been a victim of all of this and someone who like she said to be in a relationship where you've never felt desired to be in a relationship where you've never felt like the man that you're with truly wants to be with you and actually loves you the way that a husband should that would get down on you like how many years of marriage did they have like 30 over 30 like jesus christ you'd feel like so many years had been wasted when it comes to a relationship obviously the kids and everything wouldn't have been wasted but you know what i mean that time of like loving someone and then to leave a relationship at their age and think well what can i do now that must have been hard but i'm proud of her for finally thinking to herself this isn't what i want this isn't good for me this isn't okay for me and i'm gonna get out because no one deserves to be in a relationship where they are not loved but yeah oh it's sad that it's over i think that it, i was trying so hard to, i wasn't trying not to cry but i wasn't like letting myself go over the edge because i was like if i'm a wreck now then the episode's still not over <laughs> but right at the end having the moment with his daughter saying that that was the man that i loved fuck me oh <laughs> that hit <laughs> that hit hard i think if we i think if we had seen actually like seen tim go i think that would have made me ball but i'm glad that they didn't do that i'm glad that for tim they had his end of the story basically be him going out in a fucking blaze of glory to have him not laying in a bed being failed by his government and just slowly passing no he got up he went on a stage he protested he said fuck you you are killing us save us and that was tim to a fucking t so beautiful representation of his character beautiful way for his character to go out but oh uh, i hope hawk is happy i hope he's happy with the rest of his life and that he can actually try and live the rest of his life and make it a good one given that obviously tim hasn't been able to have his but it really just the sheer amount of people that died from the aids crisis you just you keep looping back to in your head don't you you keep thinking about just how many people would have still been around today if they just got up got off their fucking asses and realized that they were being prejudiced little fucking cunts and actually done something and actually helped these people and not just seen them as the right people to die oh when he said that it's i it's rare to find a character that i have i so deeply despise so deeply hate as that man i don't give a shit if it's a sign of the times a, a mentality of the time that he grew up in or something i don't give a fucking shit to have that that thought of another human being to see them as the right ones to be dying from a disease go fuck yourself mate i hope you had a horrible life going forward i hope hawk fucking outed you to your wife as a little cheat that you are but yes with that said though i believe i've covered most of the things i wanted to talk about so let's head over to patreon questions because i believe i saw we had one or two right we have one so our first and only question since this is a one and done limited series is there any time period you wish we had seen more of or a period you felt was missing altogether oh good question because like i said earlier i don't really have a gripe with the series there's not really a point of the series apart from obviously wanting to see mary's story and everything a little bit more but there's not really been an issue with the series that i've had except the only thing that i would have wanted from the series was more like when the only takeaway from a series is that you wish it, you would spend more time in it that's when you know it was done well you know and i think that there were a few moments that i would have loved to have seen more of i would have loved to have seen more of the gap between where we left off this episode in the past in um 57 and where we saw tim later on where he was like a radical and he was taken over by his religion and everything i think that would have been a really cool story to explore the uh, the time period there where tim was obviously trying to find something that he could hold on to after losing hawk and having that relationship thrown out and also 
having the opportunity of working in government thrown out as well because that was a big passion for him so i would have loved to see that journey and where tim got to there and then another few moments i would love to explore was jackson i would have loved to see more of his life and the struggles that he went through and everything and then like i said mary i think that that would have been a really cool thing to explore see how she got on with her life see what it was like to be a woman in that time to be a queer woman in that time and going through the same things i mean we saw parts of mary here and there and we saw those moments but we didn't get as good of a look as we had with the men in this show because obviously they were the main focus but yeah honestly i would have loved fucking three seasons exploring so many different timelines like i want as much of this story as i can get i feel sad that we don't get more of it you know but I understand why. It was a limited series and it's done what it's done. Done what it's done? I meant it's done what it needed to do. <laughs> My brain is going to mush in this heat. It is fucking hot in the UK right now. But um, yeah my only takeaway from the show is that i literally wanted more which is always my sign that it was a pretty fucking good show you know one of my favorites that i've watched in a very long time i think that i know it's been explored a few times in media and everything but i feel like the aids crisis and that period of time and it, also the um lavender scare i feel like that that was my first like um introduction to that i'd never even heard of that before watching this show so and then there are so many points of queer history that aren't explored, that aren't talked about, that aren't delved into de into um, when it comes to the details of it and everything. So I really appreciate that side of things as well and the history that we got to explore this uh, through this show. Because there are so many parts of queer history that I quite literally don't know about. And that is my fault. I need to get more educated on it. But I do also think that we need more media exploring it. We need more actual representation of it because stuff like that should never be forgotten the way that the people were treated by the government should never be forgotten and it should always be on people's minds because they were failed massively and that cannot happen again even though and then we all know it probably will but yes anyway with that said though that was a absolutely fantastic series such a beautiful story exploring so many beautiful people in such different walks of life like i said only thing i would want is a little bit more of it <laughs> is a little bit more of the story but I can't fault a single fucking moment that we had in this show. It was so beautifully well done. And I can't wait to watch this again in the future and just go down that journey again. Because it's so rare to find a show written and acted this well. It fully felt like a documentary. Like we were looking back into people's lives. But yeah, with that said though, that was Fellow Travelers. That was the finale. It was fucking fantastic. An excellent end to an excellent story. Don't have a single fault. Don't have a single want or wish for the series. I just wish there was more <laughs> but yes with that said though thank you very much for watching i've left a link down below to my patreon be able to find the uncut reactions to fellow travelers and all the other shows that i do also left a link to my twitch my discord and my socials so be sure to follow them if you are interested and jess thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you next time bye bye